There's that great range. Nimley on the roll to the goal. How do you do that? Nimley, long range. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's eight feet behind the line. For him to be the best on the court, he has to show it. You know, at our games, people are calling him Kevin Hart, little guy, and he just comes down and hits a three for half court, and they, they have nothing to say. He's getting 30 points against your tall players, so what can you say to him? Now fires a three and buried it! Everybody talks about his size, but, you know, on the court, solid plays like he's seven feet. He doesn't fear nobody. That's one of his greatest attributes. At only 5'8", 158, he actually... One of the smallest players in the country, but he averaged almost five and a half rebounds a game two years ago. You know he has what it takes, and he works harder than um, anybody I know. And um, he has that chip on the shoulder and that extra motivation. And I know that he's going to um, use that to, to prove a lot of people wrong and, and, you know, and, and play on the next level and be very successful. Looking back over your four years, you've had a phenomenal record, especially your senior year. What is the single defining moment that you think describes your basketball career this far? Uh, I think it would definitely be that win against High Point um, on senior night uh, for the conference championship. Um, that was that was a really big moment in our career, um, especially for me and the other seniors that I came in with. Um, you know, that's two championships in four years. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of guys don't get to experience that, and um, you know, I was just blessed to be a part of a really good program and a really great recruiting class that year. And um, you know, we were able to do a lot of big things. So definitely, that that game probably set the tone for you know my career here, and uh, I, I think. We left a really good mark on on our legacy here. Paint me that picture. What was going through your head? You know, we're in overtime and you're about to win this game. Your senior night. What was the mood in the court? Uh, it was crazy, man. Um, that that was probably by far the craziest game I've ever played in. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the game of basketball. You just gotta survive in advance. So I mean, we we we, we started off slow. We scrapped our way back into it. Um, you know, they had a couple of chances to win it late, and we we survived and we we made it to the next overtime and we got down in the first overtime and um, we came back and survived again and got to the second overtime and same thing happened in the second overtime. We got down, made plays, and took it to the third overtime and you know we were able to be the aggressor in the third overtime. And, and win the game so I mean it was it was really it was a great feeling um, especially when that buzzer went off and everybody rushed the court I mean I, I started getting chills and uh, it was just a, a really great experience and a really really great experience for the for the community of Charleston and for uh, the school of Charleston Southern. What has been the hardest challenge to overcome so far in your basketball career? It will definitely have to be the injury that I, that I faced last year. Remember this is a young man who was told at the end of last season and missed 11 games, you can, you probably will not be able to play basketball again. And he appreciated that after the fact, not during the fact. I ended up losing all the cartilage in my knee. Um, and, you know, I actually played a couple games with it missing because we didn't really know exactly what was wrong. Um, and when we found out, uh, you know, the doctor told me, uh, you know, you, you can't keep playing like this. You know, you have to sit down, you have to get surgery. And um, you know, it was like a 75% fail rate of the certain surgery that he wanted me to get. And I would have been out for like uh, a year and a half. So what was going through your head when you heard the doctor say there's a 75% fail rate? I instantly just started thinking about my future. You know, basketball has been that integral in my life, and um, you know, being being at a moment where you thought you might have lost it was definitely the biggest obstacle for me. It, it kind of puts everything in perspective. Um, I've never been through anything like that, but um, to hear someone say that something you've dreamed of and something you've done all your life can be taken away from you, you know, it makes every day you step on the court or every day you do something that um, more special and you know you cherish it a lot more and, and you want to work a lot harder. Before the knee injury, he was highly motivated, but since the knee injury, you can see it, you know, in, it, in his work ethic and everything that it's more motivating now because a lot of people say he, he wouldn't be able to play again. What is it about you that makes you such a leader on the team that is pushing you to be so successful in your basketball career? What is that? What is your drive? You know, one of my drives is definitely, um, you know, my, my teammates look up to me. I know, I know they, they trust me and they, 
they look to me for everything and, you know, to initiate things and stuff like that. So, you know, it's kind of a, you don't want to let him down. And what are those qualities that he has that makes him such a leader on the court? To tell you the truth, I don't know. It's just the way he, he carries himself. Like when I first came here on my, like, um, my visit, it was just like everybody looked up to him no matter what. And I was just like, he's so small and everybody's sitting here respecting him so much. I didn't know why, but it's just you give him respect. Namely a long range three. What great <laughs> range this guy's got. What did it mean to you to win Big South Player of the Year? Uh, that, that meant a lot because, you know, it, it says that, you know, the media and the, the other coaches around the league thought that highly of you. Um, so it meant a lot, especially, you know, uh, I was I was up for the award uh, my sophomore year. You know, I was running up for it. And even my freshman year, I was running up for freshman of the year. So, uh, you know, it was, it was really good to, to finally get that award and, you know, something to have and something to remember your career by. Paint the picture for me. Where were you when you found out what was going through your head? Tell us about that emotion that you're really feeling. It was actually after the... Uh, um, the high point game because um, uh, another guy that a guy that played for high point he was also up for player of the year and you know the talk that whole week had been you know who whichever team wins this game and wins the championship that that, that player is going to be player of the year you know so it was kind of a toss up um, but I actually didn't figure out I was in the training room getting treatment and um, you know one of my boys on the football team he texted me he said congrats on being player of the year you know that was the that was the first time I heard it. So you know I kind of you know went online and looked, and I actually saw like the big uh, CSU had made the announcement. So um, you know it was that was, that was when I first found out. And, you know I was I was really excited about it. Watch this. You're not gonna guard me. All right, I'm gonna shoot. That's not the deep one, folks. Wait for the second one. Just barely across the 10 second line. He's standing on the crown of the monarch there, and he gets fired up after that one. What has these last four years at CSU, what have they been like? What have they meant to you? Uh, it's, it's been the best four years of my life. I know that sounds cliche, but I mean, it's, it really has. Um, you know, I think my basketball has, you know, gone to another uh, level, but also, like, the environment here is, is so great. Um, you know, like, the teachers come out to the games, the uh, the community comes out right behind the, the bleachers, and, you know, you have personal relationships with those people. It's just been a really great time for me in my life and a really great time for me to grow as a man. We are at a Christian university, and so have you seen faith integrated into basketball? Uh, definitely. Um, it, it's, it's a crazy story, but when we're playing against um, uh, High Point on, on the on senior night, um, when we when we got into the third overtime, you know, you usually talk your game plan and stuff like yeah. that because because Ray didn't say anything. He he stopped. He said, "Everybody, be quiet," and he just said a prayer right there and just asked God to please bless this team and please pull this game out for us. And and then you know somehow we, we win that game. So I mean that that's the kind of, that's the kind of uh, program that we have. Um, yeah, I mean like we're we're in the, the heat of a, of a game and Coach Ray stops because he knows, you know what I mean, God, God makes everything happen for a reason. Uh, God does everything that we've been able to do. All the success we've had has been because of God. So, you know, him trusting in God, you know, he stopped right there and prayed for us and prayed for, uh, for the game and, and things, things ended up going, going the way God wanted it to go. And the shot clock turned off. It's CSU ball, Nimley for the lead. Got it! Well, he told us today he wants to play professionally somewhere in Europe, and somebody is certainly going to give him a look.